Um, some of his experiences, but also about what's going on there, uh, the ideas that underpin this revolution, this anti-capitalist, anti-patriarchal, and, and ecological uh, revol revolution, democratic revolution, and, and yeah, and just uh, to share a bit and discuss about, uh, yeah, your, your talk was titled Hacking Democratic Modernity. Hackers in democratic modernity. How to live and what to do. <laughs> How to live and what to do. Great questions to start us with. Nice. So welcome. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> thanks really much uh, for having me and for the invite. Um, yeah. Uh, just to the beginning, I want to uh, um, uh, yeah uh, give, uh, give the talk. Uh, in, not in the name of, but in, in the meaning of, I want to remember. Like in the, Stop. Huh? My Zoom left. What happened? You're, uh, you're on air, Julio. Okay. Uh, there? okay. My Zoom on air. I think maybe it's the battery or something. I don't know. Okay. 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 We're live. Okay. okay. Then I. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Um, because my Zoom stopped and I didn't know what was happening. Because, yeah, because it's uh, um, like a tradition and I think a really good one in the Kurdish movement, but also worldwide. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, give a talk kind of in the name of uh, Anna Campbell, an internationalist uh, out of an internationalist woman out of uh, the UK uh, who died uh, in the 15th March uh, 20, 2018 in Afrin. Uh, in the struggle against um, against the Turkish fascist proxies and the Turkish army, and also uh, because this is happening right now, I want to uh, remember the five comrades who died uh, yesterday uh, in the fight against the Turkish proxy army in Ainisa, which they attack at the moment. So yeah, this this at the beginning. Uh, which means martyrs never die. And yeah, so um, first a little bit about me, and I'm I'm coming out uh, of East Germany. I'm uh, part of or feel part of the anti-fascist autonomous movement a uh, long time, and got in contact 2015 with the Kurdish movement uh, while the struggle in Kobane, and. Uh, yeah, so out of this, uh, also some time go on. I I was uh, yeah made the decision uh, to go there to see the fight because it's like really uh, to go to Rojava to go to Rojava uh, because this is like really a hope beacon in this uh, world and uh, to learn uh, there um, what makes this revolution mm -hmm. and what drives us also to see the values and so on. Um, I'm also uh, feeling really connected to the, and because of that it's uh, cool that I could, can be here, feel really connected to the, like, the ideas of like cyberpunk and I read a lot of uh, William Gibson and so on and the idea of uh, yeah, fighting actually also um, and this Technocratic system uh, from within, with uh, with like uh, like all this stuff. So this is like also like influenced me a lot, uh, um, and so 
I'm, I'm also like an IT professional. And so this was, it's like my two persons, like on the one hand, I'm, I'm like uh, anti-fascist, uh, kind of anarchist guy. And on the other hand, I'm like, I uh, really like to play with uh, the internet to, to go deep and to find the beauty there, but also like see the really big dangers who, mm -hmm. who lay there. And so this was my perspective of going to Rojava. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, so like to start with, I maybe should uh, explain some, uh, yeah, some of the words I'm using. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing is I, I want to explain what is a hacker to mm -hmm. me. And because uh, I think this is, for me, hacking is not something which has to do so much uh, what you with what you hack. So hacking is not something just uh, IT people do, or hacking is not something you have to be you have to know how to program. Or so hacking is for me more like a view on the world. It's more like to see something, and the system tells you, for example, this is an umbrella. The guerrilla in the Kurdish mountains sees this umbrella as a cape uh, to uh, yeah, hide them from, from the drones. Mm -hmm. So the, for them, it's not an umbrella in the, in the capitalist modernity. Uh, for them, it's like, uh, uh, it's like a tool to protect themselves. And that is hacking to me. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are a lot of other examples of Mm -hmm. Hacking, especially uh, in the uh, struggles in the global south, but also here. So it's more like how you uh, how you approach mm -hmm. uh, the world, how you see the world, yeah. and and yeah, how to yeah how to ask uh, questions actually. Yeah. Like how to repurpose the meaning of an object yes. into I don't know a revolutionary purpose. Yes, <laughs> and I think there there we come actually to a quite interesting point because it's like um, everything like uh, capitalist modernity and democratic modernity. These are like two uh, two terms which Öcalan. Uh, um, Öcalan being Abdullah Öcalan, yes. uh, one of the leaders of the Kurdish movement, that yes. started the, the the movement like years ago, decades ago. Yes, yeah. and he he, uh, he envisioned these terms in his books. I don't want to go too deep because I'm also not too uh, safe uh, to do this. <laughs> and uh, But um, for me, this they're uh, connected to, hack, to hacking because mm -hmm. it's also like, you know, everything around us is built by capitalist modernity. Mm -hmm. um, every tool we have, like also handy, it's the internet, everything is mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like, it's like built uh, by the capitalist modernity. Yeah. But the beauty is within that mm -hmm. there is the democratic modernity. Yeah, there is so, resistance. Yeah, there, there is a resistance. Like uh, there couldn't be a planet or a, a society where there is just capitalists. Mm -hmm. That's it's like there wouldn't be a planet. If there, there, there wouldn't be a planet. <laughs> actually, there would maybe be a, a coin flying around in space. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, probably really ugly coin. But um, so like in everything you see around you, and also this is also uh, about us, like everything uh, what we are, we have like this capitalist side and we have like the democratic modernity side in us. Yeah. And hacking for me is like to also a way of uh, freeing uh, uh, this and like to find like the beauty in like really ugly things, for example, um, there, what, um, uh, there, there is like these internet sticks you, you use to uh, get internet, and then people were looking at it and were like, "No, this is not an internet stick. This is actually a device which you can use to uh, uh, to yeah um, transfer a lot of. You, you can use it for free, mm -hmm. and so so they were hacking it and were like seeing the full potential." And I think this is what capitalist modernity is doing with us. They, mm. they, uh, they say we can just go one way. They say that we, we just can do like in, a, in like a really uh, bipolar mm -hmm. way. And actually, there are so many ways yeah. and so many possibilities. And so, yeah, I, I hope it's kind of 
getting clear where yeah, like, so the going. idea of like um, how sometimes capitalism homogenizes reality and like this uh, and uh, as an opposite you were talking about this democratic impulse that exists in life in everything that is kind of a reflection of the diversity and differentiation and how one object can be used uh, for many different purposes for example yes yeah? and and this you so in, in this way um uh, when I was going to Warsaw, I saw like a lot of hacker. Yeah. <laughs> because that's happening there. Yeah, the, like on the one hand, you have like um, you have like really the problematic uh, situation that you don't have so much tools or not so much resources uh, to get so so like people are getting really creative. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, like you have this strong ideology, mm -hmm. you, you know, this strong knowledge actually uh, how to live. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're giving the answer there mm -hmm. uh, in how to live, something we don't have here, mm -hmm. and and so combined with like this all creativity, um, there's actually like a big force. Mm -hmm. But the problem there is uh, that, and then we need to talk about colonialism a little bit more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is that uh, what like how how imperialism and colonialism is working is actually to take like the resources from the colonized people mm -hmm. and put it all in the center. Mm -hmm. And me, as I'm coming from the center, for me, it's like I have had like all these resources. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the knowledge. I had like uh, I have like a PC and really early stages, so I could learn a lot and mm -hmm. also like uh, approach these technologies which are used to suppress uh, people worldwide. Uh, but I could have my own approach. But mm -hmm. in, uh, in Rajava, you often find people who had not this access. Mm. So you have actually like great hackers there, but unfortunately uh, they're missing some crucial tools mm. uh, to defend themselves uh, against, um, yeah, against democratic, uh, against capitalist modernity. Mm. And, and these tools are, are here. Mm. The, these tools are uh, uh, laying in the center. Mm. And then you you actually get to the point where you come to like okay this is like the point where you get internationalist mm. because then you realize okay we um, the movements like in Rojava but also like you it's also like happening in, in, in Mexico for example with mm. the Zapatistas or if you look at the South America uh, it's happening all over yeah. and. I think we also had like a talk <laughs> about Guatemala and yeah. burning uh, some uh, some nice the congress. Uh, the, the congress there it's also happening there. Um, so you start to realize, okay, to really overcome this, um, we need to work together and mm -hmm. we need to connect. And I think this is like one of the yeah main um, main learnings for me. Uh, and on there was okay. Um, they have and in Rojava you learn to live mm -hmm. in, in a way mm -hmm. uh, because I never really learned it in that way and, and we also talked before a little bit more about how hard it is to come back in this reality here yeah. because as an internationalist who went to Rojava yeah. and come back you know? yeah yeah mm -hmm. and uh, because then you then you actually have the knowledge about okay what how could you live and then you need to kind of fit in this reality over here again and which attacks you and so yeah this, the point is to connect and mm. and I think this is like a thing for like hacker communities uh, in, in yeah in the in the central uh, places of this world and mm. Berlin and yeah. Germany for sure is one of these central places mm. uh, and I think there is a really need uh, to to connect uh, to these Places and that means to go there to learn um, as an equal, as, as equal, yeah, yeah, as, not, comrades, yeah. As, as comrades for sure. And actually, you go there and you need to listen a lot because mm -hmm. we used to know, we used to uh, talking and thinking, okay, we, we, you know, we are at the forefront, mm -hmm. which is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, the people uh, in Rojava, the people in, uh, in Chiapas, mm -hmm. uh, um, they are actually at the forefront of the fight against capitalist modernity. So they have some crucial answers and we need to find our world in this. Mm. And our world is listen, 
<laughs> there because this is like because when we do it other way around we are being imperialist again mm -hmm. uh, but then come back mm -hmm. and start to build up here mm -hmm. with this knowledge yeah. and uh, build equal connections mm -hmm. and how to be sabbatistas in berlin for example yeah for <laughs> uh, how to build up communes in berlin yeah. and do this with this approach but also have in mind okay we need to share like knowledge, mm -hmm. for example. So there is this great uh, ha hacker space movement uh, around Europe and the US. And I think it's also slowly spreading uh, in, in the global south, but I'm not 100% sure. But this is like a thing we need to do more. Why is there, are, are there no people going to Russia and build up hacker spaces? Mm -hmm. This is like a thing where, you know, where you transfer the knowledge yeah. and, um, like this is a really, uh, yeah, because yeah, uh, be because when you when you are there, you are like me on of a technology perspective. I was there and was expecting, okay, let's see Freifunk and okay, and ah, uh, you you actually uh, having like the control over your infrastructure. Let's build the infrastructure which is not capitalist, <laughs> and then you realize, okay, no, the knowledge is not there. Yeah. And the infrastructure uh, is difficult to run without this knowledge. Mm. And but to run this infrastructure, this is a need of the society. Yeah. You need resources. Yeah. You need uh, knowledge, and you need the support of others who can yeah. help to mediate that, yeah. right? Because there is a, a, an imbalance. Yes. Right. So there are no resources. That's the, of the, for the context for people who don't know Rojava. What is an embargo from uh, well the Syrian regime, but also Turkey uh, is attacking them, and so they're kind of like enclosed, right? Uh, yeah. So, so the cameras over there need to make like deals with with people who they actually don't want to deal with, but they need to run the infrastructure. So, and um, and then you you come back to uh, Germany and then you see all these nice talks about people who who actually have like ideas about that, and then you think, okay, this needs to connect mm. because otherwise, uh, how is this gonna work? When mm. we we need to share this knowledge, we need uh, we need to go there. And actually also, I think this is another part, it's like to also see because when, where we now in the world is like we are at a brick, mm -hmm. like also with this whole Corona thing, it's, it's like burning more. And uh, I think we soon will be at the point where we, in, in like the Western world, where we need to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we need to also, also we need allies. Mm -hmm. uh, to fight and we need places to go mm -hmm. uh, when stuff goes uh, really weird and bad here and it doesn't look really well so for our resistance mm -hmm. we also need Rojava mm -hmm. and this is the same way around you know there is no yeah. uh, it's a planet based though. yeah it's, it's, you, you need to look at it in a holistic way mm -hmm. in a, and uh, it's not going without anything and a problem I really see uh, in, in like these hacker communities here is like really, mm -hmm. they, you know, they look at solutions, which is fine, they look at solutions of problems they have. Mm -hmm. But these problems are not necessarily problems uh, as the struggles in the global south have. Yeah, exactly. And oftentimes what often happens is that uh, technologies try to build uh, technical solutions for political problems. And it should be the other way around. We should, like, we should look at the, what the political problem is and then think about, you know, what sort of technological infrastructure can we build to solve that, right? yes. or to, to support that process, right? Politically. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but, but this is also like, this is another big point in, in, in uh, which you also see like in, uh, in Rojava. There, you, there's, it's like different around, you know, mm -hmm. as a, as a, uh, the people decide mm. and like the needs of the people are the mm. are the thing which needs to find you solutions it's not the other way around that you 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 say okay we uh this is your needs now like yeah. how, how we have it top here down. top down yeah. it's, it's like how we have it here it's like you see all this uh, propaganda and telling you you need to buy something huh? this this corona thing is, is a good thing like before Christmas, there was a saying that it's like the patriotic uh, thing you have to buy now. Mm -hmm. And 
this is actually not a need of, of the society at mm. all. It's a need of the uh, of of corporate. Yeah, corporate powers. Corporate. Yeah, how how do how do people decide and locally, uh, communally, from the bottom of Can you tell us a bit more about this process? Um, I can try. Um, <laughs> Um, I actually was myself not so much involved in uh, in this, uh, these local community works. I, I had other works, but um, what for what I know and what I saw and what I heard from comrades who were actually in these works, it's like really you have like you have like every street, uh, every like small um, piece neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, um, has like. Uh, they meet mm -hmm. and then they discuss problems and they have like uh, these um, these data structure. Mm -hmm. um, sort of like a council or, yeah. or an assembly or something like yes, that. Yes, uh, where then these problems are discussed. And mm -hmm. there is this strong uh, notion that like problems which can solve uh, in the community itself, it will be solved there. Should be solved by the community. Yeah, itself, and, and, and for sure should be. So, so for where you can see it really good is like um, uh, the self, um, the self defense units, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which kind of everybody has it like their own self defense units. It's, you you got a little bit confused by the time because they're also changing names often, but <laughs> for whatever reasons, but. Um, so you have like in every every like community, the Christian community uh, has like the self defense unit, yeah. and there are like the women's self defense unit, and so on and so on, and they are controlled by the local people yeah. uh, in a in, in this sense because they come from there. There are yeah. other parts of uh, um, of self defense which are then more like on, on another stage, like Yepige mm -hmm. Yepige. This is more. This is a different kind of. Self defense because they are fighting against Jesus or like the Turkish, um, uh, the Turkish army, yeah. and so this is not like controlled directly by the local people because that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like for the local self defense or for like the demonstrations, uh, this is like this. So interesting because it means that in in this society, um, uh, what we would call the police is actually controlled by people. They 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 don't even police. They just they just are um, indirect, or, uh, yeah, like the, the people basically res they respond to the people instead of to some bureaucrat or some politician or how it happens here, right? Yeah, so that's very interesting. I'm not actually sure if I'm allowed to share the story, but I'll share it anyway. <laughs> uh, because there is like one story I really like to, um, uh, which for me like brings brings like the understanding of police and so on. Because this is like a contradiction also. Mm -hmm. Because like it, like in 2011 uh, it changed, but for example, people who were police before mm -hmm. uh, were in a kind of also in these policing positions after that. They're mm -hmm. like in different after kind the of, revolution. After the revolution, in uh, in different kind of structures. Not all of them, but so the mentality of like being the police, being mm -hmm. in charge, and telling the people is sometimes still there. So and so there was. Um, but there are also like this local self defense watch. Mm -hmm. For example, for demonstrations, there's not police, there are these uh, uh, happy. Like self defense units. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the self defense units of the people. Mm -hmm. So when you make a de demonstration, then the self defense units of the people are around and not like uh, like a broader policing uh, unit, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Asaish. And so there were like demonstrations. I think it was about sugar or something. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was like big demonstration, and people were really angry. And so these Asaish forces came, mm -hmm. and were like, because they still had like the kind of the old mindset, were like, oh, you are not allowed to do these demonstrations here, and this is like dangerous. We forbid the demonstration. But luckily, there was this local self-defense forces which say, well. You want to forbid this demonstration, so now we lock you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was in Kamish, though. And so the self defense unit of the people uh, locked up these Asaish forces who actually wanted to forbid uh, the demonstration. <laughs> and then I think it was like going a lot of chaos around, and in the end, it was all solved. But this shows mm. um, a little bit. Uh, the democratic autonomy of yeah. people. Yes. Over, yeah. <laughs> so because there was a police unit who actually was still like, oh no, we we can decide, and then but yeah, 
when you have like your own self defense, uh, you can actually do is something about it mm -hmm. and not not being like uh, like it's often over here. Mm -hmm. And beyond self defense, there's also like food cooperatives. There's also like different types of of organizations that are all about managing life, right? So this structure of bottom up decision happens in everything, no? They try to implement it in yeah. everything. You they know, the, the, uh, uh, <laughs> there are like there are parts where where this is not implemented in this way yet. And I'm actually like I'm two years here now. I'm not 100 mm. percent sure. There is uh, the Roger Information Center, which have like some great resources about mm -hmm. this, and uh, they have like a PDF. Big, I really recommend looking up Roger Information Center for that because they are much more have deeper knowledge. They make a lot of interviews mm. uh, with people and so on. So, so yeah, this is not really my expertise. Yeah, yeah. And um. But yeah, you you have like a lot of co cooperatives around, uh, especially women cooperatives, because this is like the main value mm -hmm. uh, of this. Like the friends over there also like it's a women's revolution, and there you see the progress the mm -hmm. most, and women are on the forefront yeah. of the fight. And um, I think this is also like really an important part. So there are only uh, also only women groups, right? Apart from the mixed groups, right? There are only women groups that decide and have autonomy over many decisions. Yes, that's that's like there is an autonomous structure of women, which uh, which is completely autonomous, mm -hmm. uh, and there is this uh, system of uh, co-share. So it means like uh, in uh, positions, there's also it's always like fifty-fifty. Like you have like uh, you have not just one. A head of a city or something. You have like a woman's head and a, like a co-president. Uh, yes, sort of yeah, co-presidency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, everywhere in Russia. And mm -hmm. um, this is like a principle mm -hmm. you you see in every structure. And I think this is like bringing, um, yeah, this, this shows really how this is going. And you actually see the the structures and cooperatives mm -hmm. who which have like most developed in in the sense. Are like women mm -hmm. structures and women cooperatives. That is so interesting. And can you maybe tell us a bit about uh, like the everyday life there? When you were there, you said you were there eight months, right? Yes. So every day, like, how is the how is daily life there? You know, you were in the internationalist commune mm -hmm. uh, doing work, but how does what does that look like on everyday though? Well, like my everyday life is not like the everyday life of. The people in Russia, to make this clear, I'm mm -hmm. I'm like uh, in the international community, so I'm um, um, uh, uh, so so you have like different stages of, mm -hmm. of being there, and um, like but normally you you sleep like together like in uh, communal places, and you have like communal life. So you sleep together, you wake up and. Uh, depends on uh, where you are, the schedule. Uh, you may be uh, responsible for the food for the day. Mm -hmm. This is like the hardest job to you do. rotate the cooking. Yeah, the, the cooking. But uh, every day someone is responsible for cooking, and then you have to do this all day long. And this is, uh, <laughs> uh, but and so you wake up, then you make uh, sports together, mm -hmm. you clean together, then you eat together, and then you have like a a meeting where you uh, share work, like mm -hmm. it's about um, who is doing what, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of work needs to be done. And like coordinating a bit. Yeah, and, and then there are like different works, like there are, for example, in the commune we had like the environmental works where it was all about the garden, but also it was like uh, there were works uh, with the society where people were teaching boxing lessons or something mm -hmm. and uh, there are also like media works or writing something or making like like a lot and um, uh, so you're doing these works and uh, you then come together in the evening again and then you have like in like smaller groups uh, it's called tech meal where you uh, yeah, kind of reflect over the day and mm. not, not in a really long way, it's more like in a way of you because often when you go there you had like some educations and 
uh, there you learn to like see, for example, patriarchal behavior or like individualist behavior a lot. And you, uh, in, in these tech mills, you are, you need to reflect, okay, where do I have this over the day or mm -hmm. where do I see it in my cameras? Mm -hmm. And uh, so therefore there you have the tech mill and... Uh, tech mill is called? Tech mill, yeah. The critique and self-critique session, something yes. like that. But it's actually like there's misunderstandings. Tech meets are really short, so it's like, um, <laughs> and this is also a critic we often got uh, in the commune that our tech meets went like for an hour and so. And cameras came and say, "Hey, tech meets for five minutes." So, um, so you see also the different <laughs> mentalities. So, but and and this is kind of like the daily structure mm -hmm. in in the commune, mm -hmm. and this is like also the communal life. And so these structures you find. I like how to live uh, in this way, you find in, in a lot of places mm -hmm. uh, where you go. But this is working within uh, within the movement. Mm -hmm. Like for families or so, the structures are different mm -hmm. and they, they live their normal family life in a way. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, these principles are carried out everywhere. Mm -hmm. you, you find these principles also like in the military structures, but also like in uh, yeah, in the cooperative structures, mm -hmm. when you like work in the cooperatives, you also there you have tech me, and mm -hmm. you also there try to uh, see this, and you also try to in a common way uh, like share the work and mm -hmm. so on. So interesting because I even heard that um, the army or the the sort of defense forces are even democratic. So, but I don't know how how true that is. But I heard that they sort of kind of have this tech me and then decide who is actually the leader. No. This, this doesn't work this way. No, this doesn't work this way. <laughs> uh, this is the urban myth. Uh, okay. I think uh, it, it's nice out of uh, uh, anarchist perspective, but <laughs> um, no. Uh, they have tech meals and it's really encouraged uh, to criticize. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there, there's often this story told where like a small girl in Kobane criticized actually uh, the. Um, uh, the not leader, the uh, Leitung, um, the Reverie, it's called. In yeah, yeah, the, the leader or yeah. the, the commander. The, the commander of the forces in Kobane, mm -hmm. and with a really deep criticizing. So, so this is happening, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean um, like, like who to command. Uh, uh, this is a different story, and it's not like in, in, in this democratic. Uh, way decided because that isn't working in the reality there. Mm, I see, I see. And uh, yeah, you need clear structures to fight the fight the fight. Yeah. <laughs> and you also need to understand, you know, this is not like the perfect society. Or mm -hmm. It's like it's a, a revolution ongoing. So mm -hmm. you also can't uh, can't just give every away yeah. and say well you are now a free society without and then you have actually like war bands going around because like yeah. patriarchy behaviors yeah. so we need to control this yeah. because of that it's not a really good idea of when you decide to have like an army kind of structure um, out of a political reason mm. uh, to to give them uh, to, to have this so this is an urban myth Okay. Don't, Thanks so don't, don't fall, don't fall yeah. for, for this. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, so we have uh, about 20 more minutes. I'm going to check if there are any questions uh, around here on the chat. Uh, to see what people have said. Uh, No, we don't have any questions, but I welcome questions from the, from yeah. the audience if they want to uh, ask anything. Um, I have many questions, <laughs> I, I have, but I think you, have, you will have something else to say, no? Yeah, I, I have some ideas, cool. please, please. <laughs> be because the talk was actually like how to live, and I think we, we, did, that we, did, we did that a lot, And but there was also the part what to do. That's a very important question, <laughs> what to do CCC. <laughs> this is for you hackers, yeah. what to do. Um, <laughs> and so just... You know, there like one big problems mm. are actually, uh, uh, and I also experience this is like uh, the terror with which on the society uh, is come from like drone strikes, which happening with 
drone, drone, drone strike. Drone strike. Yeah, uh, which happened not just in Rojava, it's actually a bigger problem. And so actually the French sometimes use uh, this tool Flight Radar 24, which was also coming out of, uh, of hacking community. And so like an idea uh, which is around, but there lacks of knowledge and also is actually to implement uh, a way of drone drone 20 uh, 24 7 like like a page where you can see the movement of the drones oh wow and uh that would be actually a kind of really useful tool <laughs> it's, it's not useful for us here yeah, because yeah, yeah. we don't have drone strikes yeah. uh, but if you feel the terror uh, which these drone strikes have and, and this appearance of the drones alone have on your everyday life mm -hmm. uh, this is like a really big need actually oh, wow. in, in like so like basically how to create a, a, a backend that allows you to detect drones that are flying and yeah so to some satellite or how, how would that work yeah how would you imagine that working i i think like detecting drones is actually not that hard because they are not so uh, mm. so so i actually think there would be also technical ways to detect drones mm -hmm. uh with in like cheap raspberry pi device kind of things okay. um but the other way would be to give like people access to like just say hey here's a drone and so like have like some channels uh, uh where you have like trusted contacts with can uh yeah and and so that this kind of spread so then actually that had like two positive things that one positive thing is like people in the region could mm -hmm. see oh there's a drone there's a drone mm -hmm. um but the other thing is you could show the world how much drones are actually flying around and mm. terrorizing the people because yeah. The one thing is a drone strike, yeah. but the other thing is that these things are constantly over your head. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you feel like, okay, uh, uh, could happen any time, and you just don't know. And this is like, I think this is like a project. If somebody feels uh, feels uh, to do some stuff, this is a project to go in. Yeah. And the other thing I, I mentioned it already is like to go there. Yeah. Like, experience. Uh... Like experience this, but also learn there and. But bring your potential also there, like mm -hmm. bring your knowledge there, mm -hmm. transfer the knowledge, and this can be done uh, like in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. I think this is like, um, yeah. And the other thing is, do stuff here. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get organized. Yeah, and and really good examples is like to look at, uh, like there is a, a hacker, like she's called uh, Phineas Fisher. Mm -hmm. uh, Look at look her up. She uh, Phineas Fisher. Phineas Fisher. Uh -huh. uh, she did some great hacking and of banks and so on. And uh, nice. and and her last uh, her last uh, announcement uh, is a really a good one. And read this. And another good example, which also came out of the CCC, actually, is Telecomics. I think they don't exist anymore, but they had during the Arab Spring, like in Egypt, to uh, that. Or in, also in Syria, I think in Syria they deleted a lot of surveillance data, mm -hmm. and in Egypt I think they uh, provided internet when the government shut down the internet. So these are good examples mm -hmm. to follow up. Like alternative, uh, not just media, but also infrastructures of resistance. Yes, yeah. and, but also like see what is our responsibility here, yeah. because yeah. you know we this resource transfer will not happen like fast. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so we also need to do with, with our knowledge, with our resources, we need to do uh, uh, good stuff. If there are any hackers out there who would like to support this idea of building this map for the drones and stuff, how can they get in touch? Who can they contact? Ah, this is a good idea. I didn't thought about this. Um, but they probably could get in contact with the internationalist community. Mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook. And they're, they're actually on Facebook, uh, <laughs> but also like they have like uh, email addresses and okay. so on. Yeah. Uh, With PGP and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, on some way or another, you will probably get them also in contact with me because they also know me and so on. So like we stay in contact. Yeah, I think that would be cool. actually also with any other crazy ideas you have you can mm -hmm. uh, you can go uh, contact the internationalist community <laughs> because they also used to uh used to uh to like internationalists this is also another thing uh, approach 
yeah. because uh, for like other structures in Rojava, for example, it's, it's a little bit hard to have like us with our mentality coming there. And, you know, sometimes I say, we don't want to move, uh, deal with your mentality anymore. <laughs> and if I go to the internationalist community, they know how to deal with you. Because, you know, you, you come there and you think you know everything. And mm. this is a problem. Yeah, of course. And especially a problem if you like in, in like this taste kind of thing, because mm. then you think you know everything and yeah. to, you know how to do stuff and it's actually not working there like this. Yeah, the reality is different. Yes. So you always have to look at your reality and where you are. And the deciding, pe uh, the deciding factor are the people and not, mm -hmm. you know, here you can go to like some government and yeah, try yeah, to yeah. argue with them and sometimes they will listen to you yeah. if you are a hacker. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, there you have to go to the people and yes. argue with them because yeah, yeah, yeah. they will tell you uh, what to do yeah, yeah. and you do not just can go there and say, hey, we do it like this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because me and my uh, European mind is telling you this is the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will. They will really fast tell you that this is not the way. Well, this is democracy, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not how things work. Yeah. <laughs> this is also a lesson you nice. need to learn there. Nice. So the three main values uh, to wrap up of the revolution, as far as I understand, is democracy, uh, women's liberation, and uh, ecology. Yes. And actually, this, and actually, um, like, like uh, the women's revolution as a youth, uh, structure is also uh, uh, independent in a way. So the youth, the youth, uh -huh. uh, the youngsters, the young, the so because they are also like um, it, it's, an, it's just important. So just to mention that uh, that uh, that the youth uh, uh, has like an autonomous role, also an autonomous role to play there. Yeah. And yeah, but uh, ecology, uh, women's liberation. And uh, like these autonomous uh, things, this, yeah. This and this you also find there. Mm -hmm. You find there, but I think it might even be possible to also find it here too. No, th this this is the dialectic way uh, <laughs> because of for sure it's here also. It's also mm -hmm. like how we are like kind of capitalist persons, but within us there's also the, like the democratic side, and mm -hmm. we need also to find this, but. Mm -hmm. This is something where you get really help in Rojava because they have like a lot of knowledge about this. Yeah. And how to build this democratic yeah. confederation of you know. Yeah, but also like how to how to approach this. You know, this mm -hmm. take me as this communal life. Uh, um, so this is all stuff you you. It's it's really hard to build here. Mm -hmm. You need you need these spaces yeah. which are liberated yeah. from capitalist uh, yeah. to really go deeper over that because mm -hmm. over here like i for for myself it was like being there for uh, eight months uh, i made in, in like just my personal uh, approach on how to fight how to live mm -hmm. uh, i made i think over here i would need five years to to get mm -hmm. there and there it was like okay in some months mm -hmm. uh, i i actually uh, yeah learned so much so so because of that you need these these free free spaces mm, mm. and this is like the value and because of that we need to protect also like this is also our fight yeah yeah because without these places yeah uh, we will have a horrible time mm. <laughs> so yeah and this is also why um, this protection uh, because this is also a question I often get asked like. You say, well, you 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 fighting here, and so what what is what are you bringing to us, for mm -hmm. example, and mm -hmm. so on. And I would always answer, well, if there wouldn't be Rojava or places like Zapatistas or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, there there wouldn't be hope. Mm -hmm. Like Rojava is hope for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, the friends, the uh, comrades over there, this is like hope mm -hmm. that brings me up also with the Zapatistas. You know, they they're coming, I think, next mm -hmm. year. Yeah, to, they're coming. Yeah, we're organizing. To, they're coming. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to Europe, as I think. Uh, <laughs> This is hope, yeah, yeah. you know. They, they are. This are like the beacons of yeah. hope in this yeah. uh, in this world, which uh, which are like in the total grip of this capitalist modernity. Yeah. And uh, so they are, and because of that, we need to fight. Yeah, we need to fight, and we need to weave all these uh, revolutionary imaginaries of the world, right? So they yes. become stronger together. Yes, you know. <laughs> and and this, it, it will just go together. Yeah. Uh, there, there's, and this is like the internationalist perspective. You mm -hmm. know, you 
it doesn't really matter where you fight, mm. but uh, you need to connect to each other, and then with that force, we, we will overthrow this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just don't divide so much. No, no we're, yeah. we're beyond dividing. Yeah. <laughs> We need to go. We're dividing we did like the last hundred years. Or five hundred or five thousand. Yeah, or five thousand years. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Do you have anything else you would like to share? Uh, no, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> no, I, I'm not doing this. Uh, no. <laughs> greetings to all of my friends. Greetings to everybody who sees this. Um, ah. And maybe there's a question. Somebody asked just now, actually, what are you organizing next year? That's a good question. Um, but I think that's not a question to me, no? Mm. But, and maybe, maybe it was related to the Zapatistas. Ah, yeah, maybe this... I, I'm not... Um, that uh, you can probably tell yeah, much Yeah, no, the, Zap the, the Zapatistas, uh, which is uh, a, a, another revolutionary group uh, in the south of Mexico, in Chiapas. Uh, they are coming not just to Europe, actually, but to other parts of the world. Uh, yeah, to 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 come and spread their knowledge and to share also the, with the with the local experiences of resistance here. So watch out for that. I think it will be here around September, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, with many migrant groups and collectives around Berlin, we are uh, also helping to organize the coming to Berlin because they're go also going to Lausanne, I think. In France and also many other parts, many autonomous places all over Europe. Uh, so also watch out for that. And of course, if there is an opportunity to connect them to internationalists and uh, to the, the Kurdish movement, that should also happen. I guess. I think that's already happening. That's already happening. Exactly. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I wrote something that the women movement uh, is connecting there. Yeah, exactly. No, no, of course. Yeah. yeah. This is all happening behind. No, not not in the screen. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then. Uh, yeah, what, like my last word would be uh, that I wish you all really uh, big success in uh, your fights and your hates and whatever you do to to destroy this capitalist modernity and uh, hopefully we see us uh, somewhere on the way because it's a joint way. <laughs> so yes, Sir Captain, we say. In, that's the courage word for success. Sir Captain. Sir Captain. Sir Captain. <laughs> and that's you always say when you leave somebody because mm -hmm. you always wish your camera a lot of success. Cool. I wish you a lot of success too, brother. Yes. Sir Captain, nice to meet you, Bear. So my name is Julio. Uh, this is Bear. Uh, coming to you live from Berlin. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah.